Hello again, I am Blunty. When the Ryzen 5 family of CPUs came out, I put the 1600X and the 1500X through their paces in a series of reviews and tests, and I'm sure most people clicking on this video will already know, but the end of the day verdict was extremely positive. The AMD Ryzen 5 chips were not only extremely good choices in their own rights at the heart of a gaming and content producer rig, but they certainly put Intel on notice in a big way too, which is good for all of us. And while it's fair to say Intel's chips still did a better job on stuff that focused heavily on single core performance, everything else that took advantage of the modern multi-core nature of CPUs did very, very well on Ryzen. This is especially true when it comes to gaming rigs for those who also want to record and or live stream their gameplay. Ryzen's multi-cores gave you a nice slab of processing overhead to let recording and streaming software, like the popular free option OBS that I myself use, do its thing without stealing CPU time from the games. But those tests that I did were back when Ryzen was brand spanking new. Now we're a few months down the road, there's been a steady trickle of updates to motherboard firmware, RAM compatibility, BIOS patches, and what is called microcode. But jargon aside, the Ryzen chips and their matching motherboards have had time to refine their performance and tweak things now that the chips are out there in the real world doing real things for real people. And because in particular the videos I made on streaming performance got a very strong reaction, I wanted to take another stab at seeing how the Ryzen 5 family compares now when it comes to being the beating heart of a streamer's rig. And this time I have the whole family, the Ryzen 5 1600X and 1500X just like last time, are now joined by the 1600 and 1400. The 1400 in particular being a very popular request because it is of course the most affordable one. The relevant parts for the PC build I used for the following tests are an MSI B350 Tomahawk ATX AM4 motherboard, an MSI GeForce GTX 1060 Gaming X 6G GPU, the CPUs were all cooled by an AMD Wraith Max cooler, and I had 32GB of Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR4 2666 RAM. And everything of course remained identical throughout all the tests except of course for the CPU. And I'll be testing with two games, a popular and very well optimized game, Overwatch, and for an opposing force alongside that, a game I know to be a greedy, greedy CPU hog monster, Watch Dogs 2. A not particularly well optimized game, but still worth playing. OBS was set to record at 1080p, 60 frames per second, and at a bitrate of 6,000 kilobits per second, basically the maximum quality supported by Twitch for live streaming, which the 1600X handles no problem at all, but as we move down the line, I've also tested an easier to achieve and frankly more common on Twitch live streams, 720p, 30 frames per second, but at the same 6,000 kilobits per second bitrate. Now, Overwatch's native performance on the 1600X and GTX 1060 combo in ultra settings at 1080p without OBS running was anywhere between 130 and 160 frames per second. For the streaming tests, I pulled it back to 900p windowed, which is a practical way to have the game up, but also be able to keep an eye on OBS and things like a Twitch chat room, for example, if you're only working with a single monitor setup. Streaming is much easier with two or three monitors, but you can do it with one monitor, and indeed I did for quite some time. And here you can see the CPU utilization across all cores is from 60 to 80 percent capacity. OBS itself is reporting it's using about 30 percent total CPU time, and remarkably, Overwatch is still hitting that 130 to 160 frames per second mark very solidly. And the actual quality of the streamed footage, 1080p, 60 frames per second, compressed to 6,000 kilobits per second, is very acceptable. You will get even cleaner looking footage if you drop to 30 frames per second, because of course in that same kind of bitrate you're having to compress half as many frames. But even at 1080 60 it's doing a damn fine job. Get over here and heal up. Watch Dogs 2 in very high settings at 1080p full screen pulls in 60 to 70 frames per second here, and when dropped into the windowed mode with OBS doing its thing at 1080p 60 frames per second, predictably enough the notoriously CPU hungry Watch Dogs 2 cops a bit of a hit, although still staying at a very playable, for this game anyway, 40 to 50 frames per second. The finer textures and gentler gradients of this game's graphics do suffer a bit more in the compression as opposed to the bold clarity of Overwatch, but again, dropping to 30 frames per second for the stream output instead of 60 will save space for a lot more detail to be retained. 
so that's the 1600X. That's our benchmark. That's our high water mark. Let's move down the track. Moving over to the 1500X now, and Overwatch's solo performance is still pretty damn fine. You'll get a couple more grosses against the high 50 frames per second marks than I would personally like, but largely you're somewhere between 60 and 70 frames per second with ease in these ultra settings. With two fewer calls on the 1500X versus the 1600X, the narrower spread of the CPU load means that utilization is a shade higher here, both for the cores and for OBS specifically. But as you can see, there's still room enough for the 1500X to manage Overwatch in 900p at ultra settings and still generate a 1080p 60 frames per second stream without issue of frame drops in OBS or sacrificing frame rate in game. And the stream output is every bit as good as the 1600X's job. Watch Dogs 2, with the same settings as before, struggles a bit to reach the 60 frames per second goal here. Ideally, you'll drop to high settings or something, or make some other tweaks to the graphics, but of course, we're trying to make an apples to apples comparison here, so we'll leave it. But as you can see here, when we go into streaming mode, we max out all the cores. And because I've given OBS processing priority, so the stream doesn't hitch or drop frames, that means greedy greedy Watch Dogs 2 starves a bit, dropping to what I would call barely playable at just above 30 frames per second on average. No thanks. So that's the first big difference. The 1600X handles 1080p 60 frames per second Watch Dogs 2 stream okay, and here you'll be making sacrifices to your game settings to get that to work at all. Instead, now we'll drop to the more common situation for a Twitch stream, a 720p 30 frames per second setup. And once more, we're keeping that maximum allowable bit rate, 6000 kilobits per second. And here's our sweet spot. The game is back to running up to the mid-50s. The CPU core loads have a bit of breathing room. OBS is behaving itself at around 15% CPU time. And the stream is running nice. And the output is, well, really quite nice, actually. With only subtle compression artifacting, things look pretty clean for a 720p stream. So, moving back up on the core counts again now to the 1600. Compared to the 1600X, the cheaper 1600 has a slightly lower clock speed and lower turbo frequency, as well as a lower power draw, but the same number of cores and the same number of threads, of course. So how does it do? Well, as you may expect in Overwatch's solo performance, it's roughly the same as the 1600X, a small sacrifice to the gods of clock speeds here, but it's barely noticeable. In streaming mode, the load is still spread evenly across the cores with enough overhead to keep things reliably comfortable and performance stable. But you do lose a few more frames in game. I mean, you're still at a very playable space from 60 to 90 FPS, no worries. And the stream output is exactly as you'd expect for a 6000 kilobits per second 1080p 60 frames per second stream. And indeed, it's indistinguishable from the quality of its Big Brother CPU's end result. However, if you're more comfortable reaching towards the triple digit in-game frame range for Overwatch, a 720p 30 frames per second stream workload will get you there. Again, dropping to high settings from Ultra will put you over that mark more reliably, but for the sake of a consistent comparison here, I've stuck with Ultra settings. And the result is very, very smooth gameplay, occasionally brushing into triple digit frames per second, and a perfectly stable stream that looks nice and clean. Double. On to Watch Dogs 2, the 1080p 60 frames per second stream here does a bit better than the 1500X did, of course, keeping the frame rate closer to the low to mid 50 frames per second area. The extra threads helping out in a big way with that, of course. But frankly, even on the 1600X, I'd call a 720 30 frames per second stream a more sensible place to be in this situation. Here, the game is damn close to living permanently above 60 frames per second for excellent gameplay experiences, and once more, with less resolution and frames to cram into the 6000 kilobits per second data rate, the stream looks cleaner for it too. And finally, the baby brother of the Ryzen 5s, the 1400. Like with the 1600X versus 1600, the 1500X versus the 1400 is a matter of losing some clock speed and turbo frequency, and for that sacrifice you get a cheaper chip, which is less power hungry. But even it will still keep Overwatch at ultra settings in the neighborhood of 60 frames per second, almost never diving below it in fact, sometimes even grabbing for 70 frames per second. But again, as you may have anticipated by now, 1080p, 60 frames per second stream workload is just a bit too hungry for the lower core count and now lower clock speeds. That said, it's still worth remarking that Ultra Overwatch still clocks in at mid 40s to high 50s frame rates and OBS never skipped so much as a single frame. Knock the stream back down to that 720p 30 frames per second place though and Overwatch keeps you in a competitive space above 80 frames per second. 
All the while, the stream output is extremely solid and very clear. And then, here comes Watch Dogs 2, its inexhaustible appetite for CPU cycles against the most affordable of the Ryzen 5 family. Well, the game runs okay. I mean, if it was me, I'd certainly turn down some settings, of course, but asking it to do what the 1600X did still gets you a reasonably good gameplay experience of somewhere in the mid-40s. But of course, the 1080p 60 frames per second stream setup is a non-starter. The game completely chokes out and lurches around in the mid-20s frame rate unplayable by anyone's standards. But drop that down to our 720p 30 frames per second stream setup and you can actually get away with it. Remarkable in its own right, as I did try this exact setup once before with a Skylake i5 6600K overclocked and it barely managed to keep the stream and this pig of a game stable. So even the baby Ryzen 5 can be pressed into service as a streaming rig. You'll make a few more sacrifices than you will on the higher ups, of course, that's the nature of things, but you'll still do better than if you had spent even more cash on one of Intel's i5 chips for the same job. The i5s of course still have an edge in raw gaming, but you throw multitasking into the mix and I'll recommend a Ryzen 5, even the cheapest one, to someone wanting to stream without hesitation all day long. I can barely wait to see what the now just weeks away from release Ryzen 3s can be pulled in to do. I've got my little Intel i3 rig sitting here ready to have its face kicked in. <laughs> Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I'll catch you next time. My ultimate is ready! Let's do this! Double, triple.